Hey, what's up guys, your boy Mateo, owner of Boxer. Welcome to another episode of In The Corner, right here at the Boxer headquarters. I got a very special guest, one of my favorite fighters of all time, Antonio Tava. What's up, champ? My guy, what's up, baby? Nice to see you. Honored to have you here, man. Take a seat, Pleasure. take a seat. Oh, welcome to Boxer, champ. Thank you, sir. Beautiful gym, man. Beautiful Thank you, gym. man. Uh, I've been to a lot of gyms in my life, but I must say, never one like this, man. The energy in this building is amazing. Bro. You're all about energy. Yeah, you know that. You're all about sure. energy. <laughs> Ever since you were fighting, since I was a kid growing up, you brought that energy, that essence to, to the ring, to the people. Um, I want to tap in on a little bit, bit about that. We spoke about that earlier. Talk to me about energy and why it's so important in the boxing space with fighters, with coaches in the boxing game. I just believe it's a frequency. Yeah. That's missing, bro. It's yeah. a real energy of frequency out there 100%. that I don't think the game is really tapped in yet, bro. And uh, I see it all the time, you know. Um, a lot of times from the trainer position. Yeah. You know, when you think about a lot of times you look back at these moments in time of these great legendary fights where you see guys like Sugar Ray Leonard, guys like Floyd Mayweather, even myself, you know, did things you know, because of something that the trainer embedded said to us. Yeah. You feel yeah. me? And yeah. you can see that moment in time where the actual fight shifted. And Changed. so I believe that any time there's a fight, a fight that's properly matched and both of these guys are on the same level, mm. that's when the trainer truly shows up. Yeah. It makes that difference, right? Yes, sir. It, it makes, makes that, that it's a make it or break it situation. Move that needle. Move that needle. Move that needle, man. And, and, and you went through an experience like that in the Roy Jones fight. I did. I T did. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, what was I, running through your mind after that first round and, and Buddy came and spoke to you in the corner and he, he really, you know, yeah. he moved that needle with right. you. Buddy said to me, and I don't know if he knew that he was going to get that response, but he said to me, why are you giving Roy to all this respect. Yeah, yeah. He felt like that first round, I fought with too much respect for him. Yeah. And you know what? It struck a nerve in me, bro. Yeah. And I said, stop using that word respect. Ain't no respect Ain't in this no respect. And he told me, he, he said, well, go get your respect. And everybody <laughs> remember, I went out there in that second round and I got my respect. I remember when uh, Big Floyd yeah. in the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight, Yes. And, and the moment that Floyd Mayweather took off, it was because of something Senior Stop. said in his, in his ear. Yeah. Floyd, you fight like you're scared, man. Let's go. Let's fight too close. And that did something That was something a trigger point. Floyd. I remember when the great Angelo Dundee said to Sugar Ray Leonard, son, you're blowing it. And Sugar Ray got off that, that stool and took care of business. So those are the moments in time. And I'm sure Emmanuel Stewart had many of those moments. Yeah, man. You feel yeah. me? With Klitschko and the other champions. When a fight is close and both of these fighters are on the same level, that's when that trainer shows up in those crucial moments in time. And I just think a lot of that is missing in, the day, in today's game. I 100% agree with you. You know, it's not, it's not as exciting as what it used to be. Boxing is still there, but it is missing specific attributes that were from the past in your era growing up and and i think that you know trainers coaches teamwork is essential teachers. and teachers yes. need to provide that energy to the fighters and to themselves because they're going to feel as though that damn my work is paying off yes right? yes and i think it's a lifestyle and yeah. most of that work is done outside the gym yeah. you know it's about communication you got to talk Key. to these fighters get into these fighters person Get personally. with them personally. Yes, yes. And that's how, you know, you get these fighters fighting on that frequency. Yes. That yes. high level frequency, man. And I think it's all energy. You gotta have the right energy in your in your camp and in your team. You're hearing this? Energy is key. It's key. It's key. It's a make it or break it situation at any moment. I believe right? it is. So moving forward with the energy and with what you're talking about. Where are you at in your life right now? What are you doing? I, I know that you're, you're, you're coaching your son who's coming up. Right, right. Um, talk to me a little bit about that. You know, the father-son relationship and how you guys are progressing through it. Well, you know, that's always a tough dynamic. Of course. You know, um, it could be a whole reality show, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I love my son, bro. 
but he's he's a lot like me. You feel me when it comes to uh, feeling, you know, like he can pretty much do everything by himself. But I even had to learn that, you know, hey, Malcolm had a dream, but Hove had a team, bro. Yeah. And it's that teamwork that makes that dream work. 100%. You feel me? Yeah. And so uh, I'm right now, uh, I got a nice situation in Tampa, man, uh, trying to uh, rebuild my gym in a different location. That's going to be great. Man. Don't have as much space as this, but we would love something like this, bro. Okay. To really bring the masses in. For sure. You for know, sure. Um, I'm thinking about doing something training base where we get four or five guys that really love the game that we can to start training classes mm. where we learn how to be better teachers and better trainers for these fighters, you know, through ideas and really studying what these fighters, what we believe these fighters truly need, you know? And, and, and I think once we share that information, I think we all can build and grow. There's a ton of knowledge that a lot of people are missing out there in the boxing game, especially, with, especially with the knowledge that you've been able to retain over a long period of time, it shouldn't be kept it has to be respected and taken into account. And this is where it goes back to, I believe as being a big boxing fan and being in the boxing industry now um, for quite some time, your voice needs to be heard. Thank you, my God, I appreciate it. It really does. It needs to be heard. It needs to be you know, respected out there because you speak the truth. Unfortunately, these days, a lot of people don't want to speak on the truth. The truth will set you free in every, every situation. Every aspect of life, yep. You got to be honest in what you do. And this is what, this podcast, is, that's what it's all about. You know, so we talk about that. We share it with everybody. We share it with my members, the people, supporters. Um, what would you love to do moving forward in the boxing game to make that change? Where would you like to see yourself situated or placed? Well, right now I got Tarvis tape, which I believe is the most informative take in boxing. It is. I'm breaking it down is. these big fights and what I'm doing, I'm giving you the recap so we can go back and watch the breakdown. Amazing. And you can see how close I was to the actual result of the fight. And I'm telling you, Mateo, we've been doing a great job, man, and just the fans recognizing that it's something here on Tarver's tape, my guy. And it's the wow. cheat code, because if you really think about <laughs> it, I'm letting you know, not telling you per particularly who's going to win, but I'm letting you know if you listen. I'm giving you all kind of clues how the fight's going to take place. You called it on the Spence and Crawford fight. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. I know you've explained it many times. Right. But we would love for our people to hear it as well, you know. I just thought for a long time, Terrence Crawford was on another level mentally. He was on that high level frequency, bro. Yeah. And I saw that in his work. And I had commentated the fight before the Spence fight, the one where yeah. he knocked this guy out with that right hook, set it up beautifully. And then as I watched Spence, I had to be honest, I, I didn't see a lot of things that was going on, you know. Of course processing. I, I couldn't really see it. Even when he was hitting the bags, mm. leading up to the promotion of the fights, mm. it just didn't look as if he was there 100% that. Yeah. locked in yeah. for the job at hand. And so I was like, whoa. And my three best friends, man, they was all big Spence fans. And if I didn't stand on what I believed in, they would have made me switch my uh, yeah. uh, opinion about the fight. But I was standing on it. And it came out to be true, man. Crawford proved that he had that dog in him like yes. none other. Yes. Like none other. And uh, the way he went about that fight, controlling that fight from the outset, was amazing. And he mm. showed the class of fighter that he really was. Different caliber. And man, if yeah. they're going to find a way to beat Crawford, they're going to have to do it, man, in a way that uh, I don't think if Crawford stay put at 54 and 47, I think he can have a long reign there. But you, I personally don't, I don't know if he can move up as much as 60, 68 and beat Canelo. I'm not quite sure. But if anybody can do it, it's a guy with Crawford's ability. How if do I you, say that? How do you see that fight playing out with Canelo and Crawford if it was to happen? The way Canelo dismantled a bigger Jamel Charlo. You know, it would be hard pressed to go against Canelo at 168 against anybody, especially a guy coming up from 47. Would you like to see a fight like that? It's interesting. It's really it's That's really interesting. Enough. It's a challenge. It's a real challenge for Crawford. Yeah. It's a real challenge for Crawford. He'll have to be a 
special, special Crawford in order to beat Canelo. I'm not saying that it's out of reach. Yes. If anybody can do it, it's a guy like Crawford. For sure. Would you say somebody like Crawford right now, let's look at all the fighters today in the world. When we say the face of boxing, how do you presume to see it, the face of boxing? Who would you think is the face of boxing as of right now? As far as accomplishments, yes, accomplishments. it'll be hard pressed to put anybody there ahead of Terrence Crawford because he's two time undisputed yes. champion in two different weight classes. But when you look at the culture, who has the culture wrapped around his little pinky finger, that has to be Javante Davis. Yeah. You know, the one that the people come out to see. 100%. Everyone can truly identify with Javante Davis if you came from the inner city. Tank just you brings that me? sense of energy to the ring. Yeah, yeah. People are just excited to see a knockout. They want to see his skill level, where he's at, how he's performing. I want to talk to you about Tank as well right now. Where do you see Tank next year, next fights? What do you predict? I think he's gonna he's gonna be around for a long time. Okay. He's gonna be around for a long time. Uh, I still got him over everybody in his in his division right now. If if any fight was to take place right now, you gotta favor Javante Davis. One hundred percent. But if I any agree. young man out there, because of their style, and you gotta understand styles when you talk about boxing. Yeah. Shakur Stevenson really understands the dynamics of boxing. He knows reach. Yes. He knows he knows distance. He knows counter punching, and he knows defense. So those are the intangibles that give a guy that's so naturally gifted and talent talented like Javante Davis fits. Yes. But I don't know if he'll win it. It's I, a very calculated it's a fight. Calculating fight. It's going to be a chess match. Yes. Of epic proportion until that boom comes. And that's why we always tune in to see Javante Davis, because we know it's just around the corner. It's just around the corner. He, always, <laughs> he pulls something out in a round that we don't right. even expect. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, some other fights that are coming up. We got Francis. Francis and we got Fury. in the Gypsy Kid. I'll be leaving Wednesday, man, going over there. I can't wait to meet uh, Your Excellency yeah. and uh, see everything that they're doing over there in amazing. the Middle East for boxing. Yeah. They're writing big checks over there, man. And with Showtime departure, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of these bigger names following that Tyson Fury blueprint to go get that bag over there. That's because a big that's, bag. At the end of the day, that's what it's really all about. Yeah. And they're going to put on a great show. Great show. Entertainment at its finest. Great art season. Yeah. A season of celebration over there where they, they're going to have the fight as the epic of that weekend. So it's How do you see that turning out in that fight? You know, Tyson Fury has 200 million reasons to take this fight deadly serious. Yeah. Now, before he signed that contract with Usyk, I don't know how serious he was taking this fight, but I think he's had 30, uh, 40 days to really lock in. I think he's going to really focus this last couple weeks before the fight. And uh, I see Tyson Fury being the Gypsy King and controlling yeah. everything that goes on inside of that ring. But Francis Ngandu will be in there to try to upset and shock the world. And as far as being a physical specimen mm. and being strong enough and powerful enough, I would advise Tyson Fury not to take any chances. Don't gamble with a guy this strong because it only takes one punch when you're punching that hard. For sure. I like sure. that. I like that take. For sure. That's a good one. Um, we talk about the heavyweight division. Who's your top heavyweights that you see that are coming back? You got Deontay Wilder, he, you know, he's working at the moment. Um, you got Big Baby Miller. Big Baby Miller. You got a few boys that are coming back. How do you see it playing out over these next couple of months, up to the next new year? Who's in your favorite books right now? It's top heavy. It's top heavy. You got about four or five heavyweights that are always going to command the yeah. attention. Usyk, Tyson Fury, AJ, Wilder, I think it's four. Mm. And everybody else is on the outside looking in. But those are the guys that everybody wants to fight in a heavyweight division mm. because they're the name. They're the ones that bring in that money, that bag, and that ticket. Mm. You know, um, but when the smoke clears right now, you got to go with a guy that's standing as tall as Tyson Fury is long and that knows how to fight. He's knocked out the second or third best heavyweight in the world, yeah. De uh, Deontay Wilder. But I might add, I think Deontay is only... Close. Close, bro. 
to right being there. the man in this division, and I think he probably could still do it, but he, he's missing a very important piece. He's missing an important piece, bro. With your help. With my help, I think I, I think I can help him find that, bro. Okay. Okay. With Malik Scott, I think. I think it's a I think it's a great package. We can find that magic, yes. bro. Yes. That can really show the world that De Deontay Wilder can get a little bit more better and be the best heavyweight in the world. I'm all for that project. I love it. I'm all for that project. You know what I love about yeah. you, uh, champ, is you're willing to go outside your comfort zone. You're able to go out there willingly to see what to fix with these fighters. You find the mistakes and you turn the, the cons into pros. Right. And, and, and I think that's what's missing these days in boxing. There's too much ego. There's too much people that are too, you know, they're too into their own little surroundings where they got to open up a little bit and say, hey, if this man is willing to come and give us great advice and to make a real impact, then why not? Let's you, give it a go. Like, let's just give it a shot. Let's, see, let's hear the man out for a little bit. And if it doesn't work, fine. But if it does, hey. <laughs> we struck gold. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's all about. But you know? understanding the sport like I understand, man, yeah. I, I can get in these fighters' psyche. I've been there. I'm a fighter. Yeah. You feel me? A real fighter. And I'm willing to be honest with these guys that they can accept constructive